For some insight into Hillary Clinton's campaign, we go to her campaign manager, Robbie Mook, who is at Clinton headquarters in New York. Robbie, I want to start with a finding in our poll. 51% of voters in Ohio think Hillary Clinton is influenced by foreign donors. Why do you think that is? Well, I think there are right-wing attacks out there against her uh, uh, based on the important work that uh, the Clinton Foundation has done that are, that are simply uh, not true. Um, I think it's important uh, that voters step back and evaluate what influences there might be uh, on candidates. Uh, the Clinton Foundation does incredible charitable work around the world. Uh, it provides uh, AIDS and HIV drugs to over 10 million people, life-saving uh, medical treatments. Um, what has not gotten as much scrutiny is, are the financial connections that Donald Trump has. We just learned yesterday in the New York Times that his businesses owe millions of dollars to the Bank of China, which is uh, run by the Chinese state, as you know. Um, that is enormous leverage uh, but, should he decide to act on his promises, for example, to have a trade war with China. But, so I think we need to evaluate both candidates here. But what's important to know is Secretary Clinton doesn't draw a salary from the foundation. It does charitable work. Donald Trump's businesses, which affect his bottom line and his net worth, have real ties to countries like Russia and China. All right, Robbie. Well, we'll be back after this break and we'll talk whether this is uh, just a right wing or whether there is a little bit more of a connection between the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton uh, Secretary of State's period of time. But for the moment, we'll take a break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Face the Nation. We continue with Robbie Mook, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. Robbie, you said this was all the result of right wing attacks, these questions about the relationship between the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton State Department. But emails have come out showing a call from Bill Clinton's uh, personal office to the State Department about a large donor. And the response at the State Department was not go away. It was we'll handle it. So these are not totally unfounded. Democrats I talk to are worried about this connection. It sounds like you're saying there's nothing, nothing to see here for a candidate with trust issues with the electorate. Is nothing to see here really the right uh, election response? Well, first of all, the interaction in question that you're talking about, as you said, was from President Clinton's personal office. It wasn't from uh, the foundation. Uh, the person in question was somebody who the Clintons had a longstanding relationship even before they had set up the foundation uh, at all. And he was uh, reaching out because he wanted to share some information uh, with our with one of our ambassadors, uh, just some background information. So, so Robbie, just uh, a again, quick question. He's a big donor to the foundation. So the fact that he was a big donor did nothing to help ease his action access to those email accounts and that request was made not because of any donations he was given at all that didn't help him at all no, my point is that the request didn't come from the foundation. The request came through President Clinton's personal office, and this was someone who'd been a friend of the Clintons for a long time uh, before the foundation was ever set up. So again, we have Republicans in Congress and right-wing groups doing everything they can to try to uh, make something out of nothing here. The fact is that at every juncture, the foundation has gone above and beyond uh, what, what is usually in place uh, in terms of ethics and rules for a foundation like this. When President Bush, the second President Bush, uh, came into office, you never heard people asking questions about his family's foundation, which was a very similar situation. And members of his family remained on the board of their foundation while he was president. So what, what we're just asking for is for people to take a fair look at this situation. And as I mentioned, nobody's asking Donald Trump about his deep well, financial let ties me ask you to about China, to Russia, let me ask to you other foreign countries. A bottom line question about Hillary Clinton. When people look at the relationship between the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton State Department and anything that's about to that may come out in the future. When they take a look at that, is that the ethical standard that they should expect from her in the presidency as they determine whether they are going to vote for her to be president? Well, what I'm saying is that every step she and the foundation have actually gone above and beyond so, yes. uh, what has been done in the past. And the well, and the foundation is now saying that they're going to take even further steps should she become president of the United States. Let me ask you about the, there's a report this week in a book by Joe Connison that Hillary Clinton got the idea for the private email account while she was Secretary of State from Colin Powell. Is that right? Well, I'm, I, you're going to have to ask them about what conversations they might have had, and uh, Secretary Powell put out a statement on this. What we do know is that he did, in fact, uh, use private email as Secretary of State. Um, it's important to understand that and, and to understand that Secretary Clinton wasn't the first person uh, to do this and that the rules were, were very murky. But nonetheless, she has said that this was a mistake. 
She's apologized for it. She wouldn't have done it if she could go back. And I think the American people are ready to move on and talk about issues like creating jobs, affording health care, and affording college. There's obviously a dispute about whether the rules were murky and, and the server is different than a private account. But as a final question, it's been uh, 260 days since the press conference. And somebody I was talking to had been in a White House said, if a candidate can't have press conferences and deal with the cut and thrust of a press conference, that weakens them when they become president because they're going to need that as a way to communicate with the American people. So why not have a press conference? Well, uh, the real question here is whether Secretary Clinton has been taking questions from reporters, which she absolutely has. We went and counted, and uh, she has uh, been in more than 300 interviews with reporters this year alone. I know she's been on your show, and we're going to continue to do that. And there are a lot of different formats in which she can engage with reporters, whether it's those one-on-one -on -one interviews, uh, whether it's talking with her traveling uh, uh, press uh, and reporters. Uh, or a press conference, and we're going to look at all of those as we move forward. But right. I, I don't think it's fair to say that someone is shying away from tough questions when they've taken over 300 uh, interviews from reporters. We uh, tried to have okay. the interns look at how many uh, questions she took, which is a much bigger number, as right. you would appreciate, yeah. and we haven't even finished tallying that. All right, Robbie Mook, thanks so much for being with us.